How are you all doing? I hope you all are doing well. I hope you are ready to be inspired. I hope that the story that I'm going to share today will make you go out of your own comfort zone and start a farm. You can start a tilapia farm. You can start a sheep farm. You can even start a goat farm if you want to. Start a cow farm because I have been telling you guys that it's time for us to feed ourselves. It's time for us to know where our food is coming from. Agriculture is not for the poor. Agriculture is for you and I. Agriculture is the future. And who are the future of Africa? The youth of Africa. I mean, you and I. We have to venture into agriculture now before it's too late. Okay, so what am I here to do today? I am here to inspire you with another beautiful story from Dijalo Farms. This is a young man who used to live in the UK, decided to move back to the continent, his own motherland, to stop at a farm. Why farming? We need to find out. So you know what you need to do for me? Like the video, it's very important. I just realized that you guys keep on watching the video and you don't like it change your ways anytime i upload a video like the video first and first subscribe and be part of the million family let's reach two million this year and don't forget to leave a nice comment in the comment section come with me you know what but since it's a it's a sheep farm we need to enjoy some nyamachoma today man <laughs> I feel like these days I've been spending time with billionaires. Man. <laughs> Are you a billionaire? Oh, I wish one day, man. I want one day. Yeah, I, I want one day to be the uh, first chief billionaire in the Gambia. See? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're joking, but can sheep, realm of sheep makes you a billionaire? Of course. No doubt. Especially in Gambia, of course you can be. Listen, um, in England, the most expensive sheep in the market, maybe you pay 20 pounds for it. That's, that's, that's like 12,000 dollars. That's like, expensive. Yeah, yeah, if you go to, uh, to the butcher shop, you know, you, you ain't gonna spend more than 200 pounds to buy a sheep and maybe most likely it's 150 or something like that. Mm. In Gambia, mm -hmm. if you take 200 pounds to the market, you have a small lamb. <laughs> 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 huh? and, and now in England, farmers are uh, they're millionaires. So why can't we? You know, why can't you? I, I thought in, in Africa, agriculture is for the poor people. I uh, know, you see, that's one of the narration I'm trying to change. That's the concept I'm trying to change. My brother, listen, it's not for the poor people anymore. That's why we failed before. It's for the rich people. Come on, invest. L listen up, yeah? Uh, I'll give you an example. Mm. If you look at this farm here, the land is expensive. The land around the farm is expensive. Mm. I bought it early, but today it's, it's worth a lot. So if I be a poor, just the land have made me rich. Because I bought the land and I kept it for the agriculture. So because of that, today it makes me rich. So secondly, we are trying to make millionaires. That's oh. what we're trying to do. We want people to be millionaires. Like the West. The rich people are the farmers, my brother. You might, you know. <laughs> I, 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 I perfectly understand you. Yeah. That is why I keep on telling the youth of Africa that it's time for them to venture into agriculture. Man, this we have done that yesterday. This always tell people, you see, in Gambia, the wealth has gone past the city. It's in the bush. You want to catch your wealth, man, start running, man. It's sprinting. <laughs> you, have to go, you have to go to the bus, man. It's in the bus, man. Not in the city anymore. It's not going past the street. You have to go to the city. The wealth well, is going past the city. There's no wealth in the city anymore. It's in the villages. So you want to catch up? Man, start running. <laughs> we need to get our uh, boots ready. Yeah. To be ready to run inside the bushes just to go catch some wealth yeah. in the Gambia. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, brother, yeah. I'm so proud of you, yeah. of what you've been able to achieve. Yeah. I actually saw you on the internet and yeah. I'm like, I'm in the Gambia. Yeah. I need to meet you before I get out of here. Listen, this is not about me alone. I'm really proud of you, my brother. 
come to think of it, listen, how often do we watch on TV the sad news in Africa, starvation, war, and other stuff? A young man thought about it for, for himself, like, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go out there and show people in the world that Africa is enjoying, Africa is developing, Africa is cool, man. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Thank you, thank you. But I yeah. want to ask you a question. Yeah. If you hear the name Africa, what yeah. comes into your mind? Opportunities. There are opportunities Opportun in Africa? Yeah. Africa is opportunities. Listen, we have the youngest, we are the youngest continent in the world. Man, we got all this land, we have everything. Listen, um, if you look at it, if COVID did not teach us anything, then we ain't gonna learn anything anymore. When COVID came, the West did their vaccination, they produced their vaccination, what did they do? They stopped it, stopped it from going out of their countries. Hmm. They didn't care about Africa. They say, oh man, Africa, they need this vaccination. No, they did what they have to do to protect themselves first before they thought about us. So think about it. If we have to rely on the West to feed ourselves, what's going to happen if there's starvation? You think their feed is going to come here? We're going to die. <laughs> man, bro. And like um, Jack Ma once said, if, if everybody's complaining, then there's the opportunity. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know about this, yeah. but I think Africans love complaining. Yeah. Africans always love to talk about the problems mm. without thinking about yeah. solutions. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what we need to think about, solution. You see, I don't like when people come complaining. I know when, problem, when something happens, I don't want to know who did it, why, how it happened. I don't want to know. Brother, how can we fix it? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that, that's, that, that's what I think. How can we fix it? If you are yep. new to the channel, my name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy from <laughs> Ghana, who is on a journey to change the narrative mm. of Africa. Enough of the negativity across the continent. It's time for us to show you light about the continent, for you to know that it's possible in the motherland. Mm. My brother, mm. I know I know you, yeah. I know more about you, yeah, yeah. but the people watching us are definitely watching you for the first time. Mm. Who are you? Um, I am a sheep breeder, you know, I'm trying to change the narration of sheep breeding in the Gambia. Uh, the concept of Gambian people have about farming. And I'm working on developing the fastest growing and most expensive sheep breed, the Ladum breed in West Africa, to mass produce it. My name is Ibrahim Jalo, the proprietor of Gamsi, uh, the Jalos farm and the president of Gamsi Breeders Association. Were you born and raised in the Gambia? Yes, I was born and raised here. And what happened? You ever left Gambia? Yeah, and what happened, like, you know, you know, the average Gambian youth, after school, you want to travel. Because we thought the process is greener somewhere else. So I finished school, I travel. And then... I, I, Wait. Like in Gambia, everybody thinks that the greener pastures is out there. Yeah, must must be before, but now people know it's not true. <laughs> no, then is it because of that? That's a lot of people are using the back door to go to Europe and stuff like. That. No, no. When I finished school, there was not this back door thing. Okay. It was easy to get visa. You know, you don't need visa to go to many countries. You just buy your ticket and that's it. So basically, if you don't travel, it's like it's because you cannot afford the ticket. So during them days, you know, you don't need visa to go to many countries. You Ooh. just buy a ticket and you go, yeah. You know? What was your first country? Uh, my first country to go to was Belgium. And, and then I went to, um, how to call it, Germany, then Holland. Then I came back to Gambia. And then I started doing some bits and pieces and stuff. You know, I got this opportunity to go to England to study a bit. And I went there, I studied and I finished school. I worked a bit, I, I got fed up. And you I got I fed up? Yeah, man, come on. <laughs> do, I, do, do I have... There's a doctor, you know, I'm a doctor by profession. Okay. So sometimes we have to check if everything is okay with you. It looks okay, isn't it? <laughs> you left, left England yeah. because you're fed up. Yeah. Some of us are killing ourselves to go there. My brother, I'm fed up with the alarm clock. Trust me, at one point you go to the toilet, you have to put the alarm clock so that you will oversleep in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Everything is alarm clock. Hmm. You know, when I came to the Gambia the first time, my friend called me, hey, EJ, man, how's the Gambia? I said, there is no alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing in the Gambia right now? I'm a farmer, a proud farmer. A proud one. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to change the narration of sheep breeding in this country. What kind of, so you're doing the sheep farming then? Yeah, I do sheep farming. Listen, yeah. what, what really inspired you to start a sheep farming in the Gambia? Yeah, you know, what, what happened was like, um, when I came to Gambia, I mm. started with different business because I didn't know what to do. Right? And, but every year I buy like six rams. 
you know, for Tobaski. Maybe Tobaski, uh, some people will not know what Tobaski is. Like in that Muslim feast where you, you know, slaughter animals and stuff. So I used to buy like six, five, six every year. And I said to myself, listen, um, I got a house, I got space. Why should I be buying rams every year? So let me just buy them and start rearing them, you know? So I bought them and started fattening them. And then I was looking, I was having this female one, you know, among, I bought, I just like the female and I bought it. And then one day, um, when, when she lamb, I look at, you know, it was so nice and adorable. I said, listen, I'm going to mean it. Why do I have to buy the rams every year mm -hmm. and then slaughter it? Then the next year I buy another one. Why like, can I just, you know, how to go breed them, you know? So I started breeding them purposely for Tobaski. That's the reason I bought the female one. And then I went to Aboko. It's the biggest sheep market in the Gambia mm -hmm. to visit a friend. And I saw so all these sheep are having like stems, you know? A stem? Yeah. And I said to him, man, why are these all these stems on the sheep? So ah, okay. When we go to the market and we buy some sheep and stuff, you know, we have to stamp it so that when we, when we put them in the truck, when they arrive, everyone will recognize because each person has his own way of stamping his sheep. Okay. You know? So I say, wow, so all these sheep, that means it came out of the garment. So, oh, yeah, yeah, Multani, Mali, uh, how to call it, Senegal. Senegal. I said, man, hang out, man, that's an opportunity, man. <laughs> you, that's why you said, when it comes to Africa, the first word that comes in, out of his mind yeah. is what? Opportunity. Uh, yeah, yeah. He saw the opportunity yeah. and he grabbed it. Yeah. How many so, ships did you start? I started with six. I went, I sold all the all the rams and I went and bought six females and one ram. By then I didn't know about breed, I didn't know. I just let's just have some female. Let them, you know, lamb and have my you know, I don't need to buy them, you know. So when I started the process and then I realized that in sheep breeding, it's not how many sheep you have that is the money, it's how many good sheep you have is where the money is. Then I realized that the sheep I was rearing was time wasting and it was expensive, so I changed the narration. Mm. So I said, what I'm going to do now, ladum is really expensive and they, we don't have many ladums, you know. It's not a sheep you buy and they slaughter it or for barbecue and stuff. You just buy it for breeding because they're really expensive. Mm. So I'm going to just take this sheep and crossbreed it with a mediocre sheep and then produce my own ladum. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So when you take the ladum, when I take the ladum, I crossbreed it with this mediocre sheep okay. and the offspring will be like 50%. And I take that 50% and take 100% lard and cross breed it with that one. And that one will give me 75%. So by the time I have F5, I have lard. So I'm trying to have 1,000 sheep of lard breed. So then you can buy a lard and barbecue it. You can buy a lard and slaughter it because we have much produce in it. That's what I'm trying to do here. How yeah. many sheep do you have right now? Now I got about, I got like, uh, I got uh, 300 sheep at the moment. I started with six, now I have 300 sheep. 90% of the sheep you see here, they were born in this farm. They were, yeah, they were born in this farm, you know, so... Which sheep is your favorite sheep there? Ah, uh, my favorite sheep is EJ. <laughs> the one I named after myself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, named, you named the sheep by yourself? Yeah, I named the sheep after myself. You know what happened? You know, you know he, it's that like all the sheep has a name. They all have a file, you know, because that way is the way you can, how to call it, um, follow up their health issue, you know, because if... This is EJ. <laughs> This is EJ, you That's know. <laughs> this is EJ. He's two and a half years old. Whoa. You know, yeah, yeah. I name it after myself, you know. Yeah. This is the biggest ship in here. Nah, no, nah, it's not. Nah, Bible is he's taller than him, got longer waist than him and stuff, you know. Yeah, but um, he's the son of uh, Mubarak. Uh, Mubarak is son of Muxin. Muxin is son of uh, Magistrate. You know, it's like uh, we follow the genesis of the ship as well. It's very, very important. Mm. So that's where the price is, you know, the genetic of the ship. So what I'm trying to do here now. I'm trying to make the whole farm to be like EJ. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. So the ones you are seeing here, some of them are F1, some of them are F2s. You know, that's the one you are seeing here. What F1, F2, what F, F1 is when I take the mediocre sheep and cross breed it with a lardum breed. The first generation is F1. That's 50%. Mm. And you take that 50% and cross breed it with another lardum breed is the second generation, that's F2. You take that F2 cross breed with another lardum breed, 50% is the third generation, F3. By the time I have the F5, I have pure breed, pure breed, pure breed lard. Uh, let, let me know, uh, with this breed, how long does it take for it to be ready for the market? No, no, no. My lamb today, at three months, four months, you can slaughter them. You have 30 kilos. But yeah. the, the, the local ram that we have, it, it, it's more like three to four years. Yeah, yeah, it takes three years to have 30. That's what I said when I started, I didn't know the difference. So I was just buying, but now I know I have to have uh, proper blood, you know, proper breed, you know? So that's what I'm trying to do, so, you know, that way, you know, the, the, the ram you are going to rear for uh, three years uh, to have 30 to 35 kilos, I can have that maximum six months. 
four to six months maximum, 30, 35 kilos. Are you, are you ready to teach people across the continent on how to um, start up their own sheep farm? Man, bro, I love it, man. I'm telling people to come and invest. Listen, you see, you see the sky? If you stand here, you look at the sky. And I stand here, I want to uh, block you from seeing the sky. All you need to do is just turn, you will see the other sky. So you invite people. Because the more we are into these things, the better for us. That's why I encourage every Gambian, every African, especially people in the diaspora. Man, you got money. Some of them got money, they don't know what to do. You know, come in and invest in the sheep breeding. You know, invest in farm. Anything about farming, trust me, in Africa is an opportunity. Because we have to eat. Yeah. Yeah, we have to eat. Everything in the Gambia we eat, we import it. So whatever you do, you whatever you farm, the market is there for you. But how, how do you feed them? Because I think that is the most expensive part of farming in Africa, especially doing animal farming. Yeah, yeah, feeding uh, is really expensive. You know, feeding is, 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 is really expensive because what happened is, um, uh, when I started these things, I didn't know anything about sheep breeding. Like I said, it's a sudden opportunity and I took advantage of it. Mm. I started the wrong way around. No matter what you do, you start with your feeding. You know, feeding is expensive. That's how I'm working on it now. I got my own grass, I farm grass and stuff. You know, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So these are the mediocre sheep. You know, if you look at this one, this one is one year old. That's his first, first lamb. You know? Yeah, so it's one year old. One year. So the, the options are F2s. This, uh, this is the box, this is the maternity box. All the sheep in here will be lambing in the next one, uh, one or two weeks. So that's the maternity box. You know? Uh, is, it a, is it a lucrative business? Yeah, but it's a business that we invest and wait. It's not, you know, you know, one mistake we always have in Africa is like you just want to do it, bam, and you see, see, uh, see yeah, the yeah, 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 no, no, you have to sit and wait. Like I said, you know, um, the sheep gestation period is like this one, they, they, they are on two months pregnant, mm. and in the next three months they're going to have their lambs as well, you know. In this, in, in the, the thing, the, the gestation period of sheep is uh, 150 days. So this 150 days, when this sheep lamb, you need to wait like seven months, like my mentor Abu Khan, I used to wait for my uh, lamb to be uh, like uh, 12 months before they get made. Mm. And then he said, no, 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 seven months is good. So now I made them at seven. By the time they are one year old, you know, they're lamb. So that offspring, you take another one year to change a generation. So you need like five years to change a generation from a mediocre sheep to, uh, to lard and breed. So you need to sit and wait, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's really worth it. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. What, um, this year, I'm trying to teach the youth how to fish. Yeah. And uh, most of them want to see numbers sometimes. Yeah. Before they know that, oh, mm. it, it's kind of lucrative. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So let's talk about numbers in here, yeah? Okay. Let's say you take one ram mm. to the market. Yeah, yeah. How much will it cost? Dami here, a ram that we give you 35 kilos, you will pay like $15,000 for it. Dollars? Yeah, yeah that will be like uh, $300. And imagine yeah, and if I have 100 yeah. RAM, yeah. 300 times 100, yeah. bro, which company will pay you that amount of money? You know, so, so that's why I, I, I said to people, it, the, the weight is worth it. Because if you, if you, can, if you can have your, uh, your lamb at three months, four months, you have 35 kilos. Mm. So if you don't sell it for 15,000, I'm just saying, say, let's say you, I'm going to sell it for 10,000 for, mm. for argument's sake. Mm. You can go wrong with it, you know? That's three, four months, you know, or, or lamb, you know? And that means you have uh, softer meat and uh, tender meat and how to call it. And you, uh, your feeding cost is lower, you understand? Mm. So once the feeding cost is lower, you can have to call it, you can uh, sell it cheaper. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. Do you regret to live in Europe? No. Oh, what, regret? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have regret in my vocabulary. I would have come earlier if I knew what I knew now. <laughs> this guy is making a lot of money, man. I would have come earlier. No, 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 but why you did not start a sheep farm in the UK? Man, you didn't hear what I've said earlier. The most excellent I've never bought a sheep even for 100 pounds in England. Full sheep, I didn't pay 100 pounds for it. Here, there is no, you cannot buy a sheep for 100 pounds. So it's, it's easier to make the money in Gambia than in England. If farmers are making millions in England, we sell it for 100 pounds, and you can sell it more expensive than 100 pounds, yeah, why would I do it in England? You know? Obviously, you know, you can make more, more money in the Gambia. So if I knew what I knew today, I would have come earlier. <laughs> I 
I know it's a lucrative business, yeah. but definitely there are challenges, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what yeah. has been the major challenge setting up this in the Gambia? Yeah, um, when it comes to sheep breeding, when it comes to sheep breeding, uh, some of our major challenges is vets and feeding. Yeah, feeding really um, is expensive. Mm. But at least with feeding, we, we can have a solution like I'm doing now. I got some grass, I'm working on the grass, feel grass in it. So that's a solution. I can conquer that one. But the yeah. vet, that one I can't. You know, so I will encourage the government to invest in more vets because right now um, we have few vets in the Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, the Minister of Livestock. They are doing their, their, their best, but I will encourage the government to uh, invest more in the, in the vets. I, I've interviewed a lot of um, African entrepreneurs and they keep on saying that the system doesn't support yeah. entrepreneurs. Is it the same here in the Gambia? It used to be the same in, when it comes to sheep breeding, but the new minister we have this year, this time, the new minister, because I always say that she is different, she is different. Definitely, um, she came here for the first time in the history of the Gambia for a minister to open close her, uh, her, her office and go out to look for uh, sheep breeders. Mm. That's the first time, so I appreciate it. Mm. And, and she brought us a small dominant project. You know, this, it's the first time in the Gambia as well. So with, with this one, I think we need to give her a chance. Yeah. She has started, she has made a difference, you know, exactly. definitely. Before, man, they don't even, you go to an office. I've been doing this for seven years. I've worked in the minister's office before. They practically chase me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because even once you say she breeds, they don't want to hear. So if she comes and start listening to us and saw the, uh, the opportunity in that, and believe me, since she came here, I got like 10 people who are starting to invest into sheep breeding. Listen, uh, you've been talking about uh, people investing in sheep, building, uh, sheep breeding, and I know that after this video, a lot of people will love to start their own farms. Yeah. I, I want to ask from you, is it cost effective when you want to start something like this? You see, anything I do, I start small. Whatever I do, I start small. And whatever I do, I always encourage people. You see, with sheep breeding, um, if you want to go into sheep breeding, it's important you work on your feeding first. Work on your feeding and good genetics. It's very, very important to have good genetics. And once you have feeding your good gen genetics, you have a good team. You know, management is core. Cool. These three things, if you have it right, you will succeed. Mm. And don't never ever underestimate the experience other people have. Go and learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, learn from other people's mistakes. You see, when I started, I was doing it blind. I don't have anybody to guide me. All the mistakes I did, if you come to me, you will not do it. What took mm. me five years can take you two years. True. Yeah, so, so learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, that's why I always learn from other people's mistakes. It's more like learning from the best, yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what, before I let you go, mm. we have so many young Africans watching us right now. If you have a message to them, what would that message be? I can pinpoint to the Gambian mentality or way of thinking. Because maybe the way it is in other African countries is different. But the Gambian mentality is you can't make it if you don't go to Europe. It's not true. Everything in this farm is made in the Gambia. In this farm, not a single boot I took for money I work in Europe. Now, when I started it, I want to prove a point. I want to show people that it can happen. And people who know me when I started, everybody knew that everything in this farm was, was, was money I made in the Gambia. I started with six. 90% of the sheep you see here, they were, they were born in this farm. You understand? So what I do, um, when they lamb, I keep the female one, sell the male one. Use that money and feed the, feed the female one. You know? So now, now in the farm is here, it's established. You know? So when people think that you have to travel to make it, it's just a mindset. You, know, you can make it in the Gambia. This business alone is an investment. And it's an investment that I made in the Gambia. You know, so I didn't take Europe, not the land, the land wasn't bought from European money, no, 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 not the land, not the sheep, not anything, everything in this farm. That, that doesn't mean that you came from Europe with nothing. No, when I came from you, I came with money. I came with money because when I was coming from Europe, to be honest with you, I, I didn't intend doing sheep breeding like I explained earlier, yeah. but I wanted to go fishing. Because one day I was at Tesco's, I bought a sheep, uh, a fish for six pounds. I said, man, I can't believe it. six pounds, one fish. We got the ocean, man. <laughs> I called my mom. Hey, your mom, can you believe I paid six pounds? You know, when she come back to Gambia, money, she said, Are you crazy? I said, I'm not crazy. What? <laughs> you know? So I, I did my logistic. Ah, that I was fed up. I was fed up. I just wanted something to click. So I said, Miss, you know, just have a reason, you know? Yeah. You know, sometimes it's like uh, you just want somebody to say, Jump. You know, so that was the jump for me. <laughs> so, exactly. so when I, when I listened to that, I said that I, I, I called Gambia. 
you know, I did some feasibility studies for, for, for fishing and all those things. I, you know, I, I got all my resources. I came in. Unfortunately for me, I came, I couldn't have somebody to build the boats for me. You know, and that, that hindered me a lot. And then I started doing different businesses. Okay. You know. But when I uh, got this opportunity, I put all my energy and effort into this one. Because this one is the, is the lasting one. I know this one, I want to build it so that my children can have a first generation. So, you know, you go to Europe and say, ah, we are five, fifth generation farmers. That's, that what I wanna, I wanna, that's the legacy I want to live here. You know? So I will, appeal, I will tell to the youths, the $200,000 here, you think you can take, the government used to go to, to the back way. Listen up, you know, $200,000 here. You give that to me today, and I go to the bush. In five years' time, my brother, if you go to Europe, when you come back here, if I don't lend you money, you will not lend me money. Yeah, now. Nah. Yeah, definitely. That's how I'm 100% sure of that it's, one. It's been seven years doing business yeah. in here. Yeah. Uh, are Gambians now um, purchasing from you? Yeah. No more like, are they purchasing from you? Because now, before they used to buy from um, stuff that have been imported from yeah, Gambia, yeah, yeah, yeah. what do you call it, Senegal, Mauritania, yeah. and the rest. Yeah. Are they now purchasing from you then? Yeah, definitely. I will thank the diaspora a lot. Because definitely they patronized me last year, the Tobaski. Yeah, because what happened is that they, they will call me, buy, buy the rams. You know, in the next stream, when you come, you, have, you find here yeah, extra 200 sheep, rams. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Normally, I buy like 200 rams. Last year, you know, buy them, putting them for Tobaski. Because what I'm trying to do is, is to build up my customer base. You know, right now, the amount of ram I'm producing, um, I got more customer than that one. So I don't want to just minimize, minimize it uh, to that amount. So I try to cater for everybody who wants to come in and support. So that when the farm grows and I have enough sheep, then I got people to sell it to without a problem. So last year, they patronized me. And I give a very good service as well. You buy a ram here, and you leave it here till day before Tobaski, and you come and collect it. So there's no hassle. You find out we, we, we clearly wash the ram, it's clean. But you just take it the following day, it's slaughtered. So no hassle. You know, so those are the services we did. But I really appreciate, uh, and I thank the diaspora people for, for all that support, and the government people as well. Since, and, since you are thanking the diaspora, mm. what is your message to the diaspora? Uh, the diaspora, what I'm going to tell you, the hours are too hard, my brother. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There is no life in it. You know, you, if you make that little money, listen, it will never be enough. It will never be enough. You think like I'm going to build my first house, then you build a first house, I say, wow, I need to build the second one. I need to build the third one. Listen up, take that leap, jump. Come to Africa, invest. Invest into agriculture. Shipping in particular, it's, it's, it's like it's a virgin area. Can you imagine if, if people are saying I'm the biggest farm in the country? Then what, what are people doing then? You haven't even started. You haven't started. I want 1,000 sheep, you know, I have 300, so I haven't started. So that tells you, come home. You know, last year, the Senegal, this year, you know, it was last year, November, the Senegalese Minister of Agriculture came because our association had a sheep breeding so, and he said, from their records, 50,000 sheep crossed from Senegal to Ghana during Tobaski. 50,000 sheep. If each sheep costs $10,000, that's a lot of millions of dollars. We shipping to Senegal. We could have left it here, create jobs. So I will appeal to you, take that jump, take that leap, come home, brother, and invest. You ain't gonna regret it. Listen, what you think about Africa, it's not like that. It's too hard, it's too harsh, you don't have freedom, you don't have, come on. You were born here and you survive. And you think you cannot come and survive? It's a myth. Thank you. If you had one chance to change one thing in Africa, what would it be? Leadership. Yeah, leadership. Leaders in the homes, in the offices, at, uh, at the top level, every piece of our leaders. I'll give you an example. The minister decided to come and visit me, a sheep breeder, which never happened. What that did to me? It, it encouraged me. It encouraged other people to say, oh, oh, okay, now the government is, you know, is looking at the farmers and they wanted to come in. Just a visit. You know, so leadership is important. People look up to you. Whatever you do, whether you know it, you don't know it, it means a lot. So the leadership, we need to change it. And the, uh, the attitude as well. You know, we the people, you know, sometimes we blame the leaders of what we are doing. You know, if I'm a good uh, father at home and I'm, I'm blaming the, uh, the minister or the president, oh, I'm not better than him. We start from home. Let's be good husbands, you know, good wives and all of it. You know, understand? You know, whatever we do, we try to be good at it. You know, let's change the narration. We, you know, the one thing I don't understand with we, we, uh, us Africans is, we go to abroad, we study in their universities. We, we work in their companies, we do everything in there, and we are good at it. We come home and we start changing. Why? I say, ah, that's, that's, that's the system. Which system? You know, when I started, everyone said to me, this cannot be done, they will not survive. I said, listen, I don't believe in that. Whoa. Yeah, 
It was even educated people, you know, they are saying to me, no, this, they will not survive here, it cannot be done, it's impossible. Yeah. I said, listen, tell me why it is impossible. I want to know why they are dying. That's the question I want to know. You say they, 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 they will die, I want to know why. And today, I used to have like 50% mortality rate, now I have under 5, 5%. So it's, 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 it can be done, you know? I, I, I'm so much inspired today and yeah. I believe that if you are also watching this video, yeah. you are inspired and you would love to talk to him yeah. in person. Yeah. How do we reach out to you? Um, you can call me on 0022078934 or you go to my Facebook page, Dijalos Farm, uh, or my YouTube channel, Dijalos Farm. You know, man, bro. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Thank you yeah, so yeah, much that, for having it's, it's, me. It's, it's an honor. It's an honor. But man. I won't yeah. live without um, eating some yama choma, man. I need some sheep. No, 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 no. We're going to have some roasted one. No, no, no. I'm going to give you a three months old name and you go and see how it feels. Uh, <laughs> I want to say thank you so much yeah, for yeah, watching. Yeah. I'm going to see you in the next one. Make sure yeah. you like the video. It's very yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe and be part of the yeah, million family. Yeah. And most importantly, share yeah. so that each and everyone can get a piece of this. My name is Watermeyer and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.